August the 3rd, 1914, Melton was a peaceful small town, the heart of a farming community. August the 4th, 1914, war is declared and people's lives are changed forever. The young men of Melton volunteered to fight. They looked forward to a grand adventure and seeing the world. And they would fight and suffer intense cold, killing mud, searing heat, wounds, sickness and disease. And they would die in places they had surely never heard of. Gallipoli, Sinai, Beersheba, the Somme, Ypres, Villas Bretonneux. The railway station is where many of these brave young men started their journey to war. The streets you walk in now, these men walked in 100 years ago. They went to school here. They worked in the town and on farms. They went to dances and watched films. They played sport. They lived their lives here. Each of these soldiers has his own story. Here are just a few of them. William Whiteside was the first soldier from Melton to be killed on the 28th of July, 1916, in France. He was 22 years old. He was shot in the shoulder at Pozier whilst crossing the Three Ridges, and it was reported in the battalion that he had died in hospital in England. William Hogg was one of the first men to enlist on the 19th of August, 1914. 15 days after war had been declared, and only four days after the Australian Imperial Force, the AIF, was formed. He was in the first convoy of troop ships that left Port Melbourne in October 1914. They thought they would be home by Christmas. They were not. William served at the landing at Gallipoli, then in Egypt, and as a gunner on the Western Front, where he was gassed. Not only was he the first Melton boy to enlist, he also served the longest. He returned to Australia on October the 8th, 1918. He never spoke of the war. William joined the Victoria Police Force and was decorated for valour and became a superintendent. Horace Lang went to school at Melton Primary and was the youngest son of Mary and Thomas Lang, the headmaster. Horace enlisted in March 1915 and sailed for Egypt in May. He served as a Lewis gunner at Gallipoli and France, where he received the military medal for conspicuous gallantry. He sent a photo of himself to his sister, Jessie. Two years of the horrors of war are etched on his face. Eight weeks after this photo was taken, Horace was killed at Bullicourt in France. He was 23 years old. He was very badly wounded by shells and bullets and died on the way to the dressing station. His body was never found. His father received Horace's effects. Curios, a pair of scissors, pipe, three devotional books, balaclava, scarf. Horace's brother Thomas also enlisted and wrote to the Melton Express about his experiences in the desert. The insides of our tents are all snowed up and one has to dig one's blankets out of a sand heap, sand and flies in everything. Thomas died of pneumonia and malignant malaria in a Cairo hospital on July the 18th, 1918. Sister Jessie Buchanan MacDonald joined the Australian Army Nursing Service in December 1914 and served in Egypt, England and France. She received the Royal Red Cross Award for nursing service in military hospitals. Other women from the district who served as nurses were Helen Bowie and Connie Bubeck. The women of Melton joined the Red Cross and raised money, sent food parcels and knitted socks, which the men were desperate for as they stood in the trenches in freezing mud and water for days at a time. Perhaps most importantly, the women wrote to soldiers who were longing for news from home. Jack McPherson wrote to his mother, I got a letter the other day. 
the first news since leaving dear old Australia, and then it was pretty ancient, but it was like going into heaven for a while. And the women also waited for news about their sons, husbands, brothers and loved ones. John James McPherson, Jack, was born in Melton and played football for the Melton Bloods in the under-18 team. He had been in the Volunteer Light Horse and was a clerk for an auctioneer's business in High Street. Aged 21, he enlisted in the 4th Light Horse. A farewell social was held for Jack in the Mechanics Institute. Jack served at Gallipoli and took part in the capture of Beersheba, one of the last cavalry charges ever made. After the war, he returned to Melton, married, started a business, and became secretary of the Agricultural Society, which held shows where Melton Secondary College now stands. The Burton brothers enlisted on the same day and have sequential service numbers. Robert is 4451 and William is 4452. Robert was a blacksmith before he enlisted. He was wounded in action three times and was awarded the Military Medal for conspicuous gallantry. He was invalided out of the army and returned to Melton in 1919. William was an engine driver. He was wounded twice, shot in the eye severely in 1916 and gassed on the 31st of August, 1918. The Neal brothers, John, Keith and Frank, lived in Mackenzie Street, close to where the library is now. They returned, but like so many returned soldiers, they suffered long after the war had ended. Frank received a severe gunshot injury to his left arm and was also a prisoner of war in Germany. Patrick Nolan was one of four brothers to enlist. Patrick joined the 8th Light Horse, but was wounded. He sustained bleeding to the ears and shell shock. His daughter Margaret remembered that the family were aware about the state of his nerves, shaking and needing a walking stick. Archie Cameron was a motor mechanic, killed on the Somme on the 8th of August, 1918. A fellow soldier wrote, oh, I know he came from Melton in Victoria, he was buried in the field near the village of Moorcourt by two of his pals. One of the pals who buried him wrote, No doubt as to his identity. I knew him as well as my own brother. His friend, Alfred Pierce Butler, wrote a poem to commemorate Archie. Part of it reads, So we'll look no more on his sunburnt face, nor his eye with the kindly gleam. As flannelled and fit he did his bit, at the head of the football team. And down at the show, we are lonely now, when we visit the jumping course. For no arch is there with his windswept hair. Aye, and how he could ride a horse. Some of the family names of these young men live on in Milton. William John Dodermaid was a 25-year-old farmer who played with the Bloods in their 1913 premiership. He was known as Big Bill Dottermaid and had a reputation for sportsmanship and clean play. William enlisted the day after the Burton brothers and they fought in the same battalion. William fought in the Battle of Bullicourt in France and was listed as missing, then as a prisoner of war. He was interned in Limburg, Germany for one year and eight months. He was released. He was welcomed home at Victoria Hall in Melton South, and after speeches and singing, dancing was indulged in till 3 a.m. Thomas Stanley Prize Exel and Joseph David Prize Exel were brothers. One brother came home, one did not. They lived at Glenloth in Melton South, and Tom also played for the Bloods. He served in the Imperial Camel Corps in Egypt. A trooper wrote about Tom. He was a fine, big, fair fellow and came from Victoria. It was just after the fall of Beersheba and we were going into attack on the 5th of November and he was hit by a bullet. He was then sent down to the 4th Australian General Hospital, Cairo. He was a very popular fellow with his company. 
25 days later, on the 30th of November 1917, Tom died of his wounds and he is buried in Cairo. His obituary stated he was the loved husband of Clara and daddy of little Georgie. Frederick Coburn lived in High Street, Melton, and enlisted in 1915 when he was 18. He sailed to war on the same ship as Arthur Baker, another Melton boy who served in the 1st Machine Gun Battalion, and Private Albert Martin, who was killed in action in France on the 30th of April, 1917. Frederick returned home in January 1919 after four years of war. George Close was 36 years old, a labourer, and married to Christiana. He returned to Melton, but suffered from his war injuries for the rest of his life. John Morris was a stretcher bearer and was killed in action in France on the 29th of September, 1918. A fellow soldier wrote, He was, at the time of his death, rescuing wounded, when he was practically blown to pieces by shell fire. There are no records of any burial or cross being erected, on this account. He was one of our best stretcher bearers and he practically gave his life in an attempt to rescue a wounded comrade. John Farrell from Melton Park died of illness on October the 11th, 1918, just one month before World War I ended. He was the last Melton soldier to die in World War I. The war was over. Some men returned, some did not leaving their loved ones to grieve and to keep their memory alive. The Melton Anzacs, their spirit lives on. We remember them.